Equilibrium of coplanar force systems. Okay. So what's that mean? If we keep something in equilibrium, everything is equal, right? Easy enough. So what we've got to do is we've been figuring out what forces are acting on a member, right? That's what forces in the X, forces in the Y, and that kind of good stuff. What we've been doing is we've been setting that all up so that if we know what the forces are, are that are acting on those members, then we can adjust our anchor points in case of the beams to be able to hold those kinds of forces, right? So essentially all we're going to be doing is figuring out, okay, I've, I've got these forces acting on this beam or this whatever. Could be a sign, could be a cable holding up a sign, or it could be the cable holding a post, you know, on an electric pole, a guy wire, right? So, and that, that would have tension in it. So we've got to figure out then what that force needs to be, and then later on in strength of materials, we'll have to figure out how big does that cable have to be based on those forces. That's all we're doing. So we're just continuing on with chapters one through three into now we're just saying, okay, well, if we know what that is, then we know what we've got to do to counteract that is essentially what we're doing. And if we can keep it in equilibrium, then it's going to be static, isn't it? So that's what we're up against. So that's what this first uh, figure here, the free body diagram they're showing is that we've got this 10 pound weight on a, on a rope and uh, Basically, what we're trying to do, we've got, uh, and we drew some free body diagrams in, in those last sections. I got to make sure and turn the ringer off. Hopefully, you will too. So, we've just got to uh, figure out how to draw the free body diagrams. And, and honestly, once you figure that out, then it's just putting the right pieces together to match that up, and you're in, in good shape. So, so, basically, what they're saying there is. Um, on this example, if I can find my pen, okay, there it is. Let's go in here and get a big enough pointer. So basically, if this 10 pounds is pulling down on this, then the rope has to pull back up, doesn't it? And that's what's happening here. So you've got a 10 pound force right here, and you've got some force holding that up. There's tension in that rope, and then there's some kind of a force right here that's trying to counteract that to keep that that eye from pulling out of the wall intuitively you probably understand how this works you understand that if I take a bolt and put it in that wall or, or a screw or something that I, I can pull it out I can overcome that the the materials in that wall can I okay so then it's a matter of if you attached a, a scale to that and started pulling like a fish fish weighing scale, started pulling that, you could figure out how much that wall can hold. You you would do that and it just normally you would think that and do it. Okay, in fact if you go to the to the hardware store to Lowe's or or Home Depot, if you look at the anchors, they tell you how much how much weight they should be able to hold, don't they? They've even gotten it to that point now. Well, somewhere along the way, someone has figured out how much that drywall can hold. They've done testing, and they give you that engineering data. Well, we're going to be the ones figuring out what it's going to take. That's what you're going to do eventually, isn't it? That's when it gets cool. It's like, man, this is what I went to school for, you know, and that's fun. Here you go, Robel. So that's what we're up against. So in free body diagrams is your picture into that world. This, it's just a simplified way to make that, that picture look like all we need. We don't need that pretty picture to be able to do the problem. We just need that free body diagram, okay? And I decided I'm gonna do this a little bit different this time too. Um, I'm just going to insert the pictures as we go. I think that'll probably uh, work a little better. Because I had to move them anyway, so 
Uh, let's see. I didn't count on this being in my way, though. So then the next picture, we see figure 4.2 looks something like this. Let's see what that's all about. Okay, so we've got this figure here. All right, so what are we looking at there? Well, <laughs> we've got, it's, it's a very similar thing, right? But we've just added another another component into this. We've got one that same rope with some kind of a weight dangling off the end of it, but now we've got two other ropes, potentially, or it could be one rope with another rope coming off to the side. Okay, and now we've now we've got this, we're kind of tweaking into the, to our um, resultants of all the forces, aren't we? That we had in chapter two. Looks very similar, doesn't it? So here's the free body diagram, the breakout of that. So you've got some kind of weight hanging off the end. You've got an angle theta two here, theta one here, and that just those two uh, force it force members there, if you will, just represent those two pieces of rope and what's going on there. Now, eventually, we would say that we've got some kind of a force going on here and there probably to counteract that don't we the tension in that rope but first we have to find the tension in that rope once we find that in in both of those ropes then we can go to the anchor points and figure out what's going on there so this is more of a two-step type deal here that's what figure um, 4.2 is telling you all right and again this is going to be in tension course this will be too and, and this will be. Are these figures supposed to be in our book or not? It should be yeah. should be on page 63. Oh. Yep. They're the first two figures. 63. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Nope. And, and, and that's why I left these labeled. I went ahead and left them labeled because they will say figure or example. So yeah but that's that's fine. Uh, you know, I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. I don't care if you ask questions, and, and you, you definitely need to be on the same page. No pun intended. Okay, or maybe so. Huh? So, does this seem to make sense? We'll find out later. But, you know, as we go along, you know you can ask questions. So, but we start dealing, eventually we'll start, and I'm, I'm kind of trying to work into that, we'll be dealing with tension and compression on a regular basis. So, and typically cables or ropes are gonna be in tension, aren't they? If they're not, then something is moving. The cable can't be in compression. You know, it, it's, well, right here, it's a cable, isn't it? You can pull on that, it'll stay where it's at. But if I start doing that, compression says, nope, sorry, it's moving. Here, static, there, moving, okay? So, so I start trying to mix these things in there just for meanness, so later on they'll make some sense. All right. So then the next figure shows up. Let's see, I thought I moved that. Get that out of there. Figure three, 4.3. 